I can say I got an album. I can say I got an album on Spotify. Go go stream my album, bruv. <laughs> Make some noise for K Cut! What made me want to record a special? I wanted something that was high quality that people could watch that I was proud of. That's gonna be my face one day, you know? That's my name. All right, cool. I think it's every comedian's dream when you first get into stand-up comedy, you look at like your, your idols and people that you saw. Now it's magical, right? Because you, you end up like, what happens with a comedy club? You, you start doing fives, five minute sets, and then you do tens. And then eventually they're like, do you want to come and do a 20? And then you do 20s for them. And then that's, that's it. And then you try and work your way from a middle spot to an open to a as in like from an opening spot to a headline spot. And, but this is a dream to put on your own show, so. It's weird, I've played this venue so many times, but like I just feel to myself now, like this is crazy, bruv, like. The actual night of the recording was, 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 it was, it's so funny because I think at the time I wasn't really taking it in because I was such a bag of nerves. What, what do you do to warm up before you show? Do you have a ritual? You know what, when I first started comedy, I used to, like, over a thousand times, just whisper to myself, I'm better than Eddie Murphy, I'm better than Eddie Murphy. Like, which was a distinct lie, but... That's the maddest lie, bro. At the start of your career, bro. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was so nervous, but it was one of the best days of my life. I take a lot of influence from musicians and independent musicians and people, rappers and stuff from the grime scene or... You know, even like the punk era, people just wanted to do things their way and, and it was a bit rebellious. I want to open mic is to see me and be like, ah. And I just thought, you know what, why not? Like, nobody else is doing this. I know I can do an hour and I know I can do something that's great. Why not get up there? I can't wait forever for somebody to be like, hey, here's, a, here's an opportunity. Why not make it yourself? And uh, if you're fortunate enough to have a great team behind you, uh, and people that believe in your vision with you, you can make things like that come to fruition. Uh, and and in, a, in, a, in a good, positive way. And I think uh, ever since we did record a special, I think there's more and more people that are sort of looking at that model going, oh wow, actually, like, there's, there are different ways of doing it. Like, I don't have to necessarily do this um, way that I've been told by others. I can just believe in my vision, own my own content and have complete creative control which is what i think the main important thing was about this project as well because it was like yeah man like i can if i don't like the way something looks i could get rid of it i could tell tell gelly be like yo change that bruv <laughs> uh, cool. uh, thank you gelly thanks often here we don't have that culture of people recording specials and stuff as well but it, it's one of those things where I think it, it, it just makes sense, it's needed. When I did the special, it was kind of like, wow, all these people are coming out to this place just for me. And seeing the other comedians that had come out as well to, to support and, and watch and seeing that level of um, respect from your peers as well was incredible. It, it wasn't even worth doing it, now you're like... <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I'm doing it for the footage. Being on that stage and everybody hanging off your, your every word and the fact that they were waiting for this, like for a lot of them this was just like a little gift or whatever that had given somebody or they, like it was a night out for them or whatever and, that, and, and for them to be part of your journey was quite surreal as well. But I was such a bag of nerves, I was pacing up and down, I was trying to remember my lines, um, uh, remember the jokes that I was going to say, I didn't want to mess anything up because uh, 
rather boldly, we only went for one record. Oh, baby, hey. I gotta let you know that you've got that one. Color flash, yeah. <laughs> when I saw the um, guys opening, and I saw how the crowd were reacting, I was like, okay, wow, like, these people are up for it tonight. And, yeah, it was fun to see people that had seen me, like, especially being at Up The Creek. Like, your home club, people that have known you for ages, friends, family, like, people that are close to you. It was just, yeah, it was just, it was just such a surreal moment. And the, the, I think everybody sort of, like, felt like they were in on something on the night as well. Like, they were like, wow, this is kind of cool, um, which made it um, a lot more special to me as well. What made me want to release it on YouTube was a uh, realization that the world has changed and the way people consume content has changed. The way people consume content has changed. So a lot of people, anytime I tell somebody I was a comedian, they'd be like, all right, so can I find you on YouTube? Can I find you on Instagram? And it was never like, what TV program have you been on? And it was never, um, you know, like, where can I catch you live? It was mainly like, where can I find you? It was, it was about trying to get my stuff out there to as many people as possible. It wasn't about making money or whatever. I wouldn't need exposure and I thought to myself, I used to watch Chris Rock and Dave Chappelle and Bill Burr and like Adam Bloom, like fantastic comics just on YouTube. That's how I came into comedy. To me, I remember watching a Wretch 3-2 interview years ago and they asked him, what is the hardest part about being an independent artist as opposed to being somebody that signed? And he said, when he was independent, he was tr it was trying to get your videos the same quality as somebody that was signed. And that rang true with me. I was like, I don't want it to just be like some piss ball video where it sounds like crackly and people are like, what's this? I wanted it to look absolutely amazing. And a shout out to everybody that was involved with it, the camera crew, the, the directors, every, do you know what I mean? Everyone that was involved in that process because it turned out to be something that that is broadcast quality and no one can take that away from you. So that could go on any sort of streaming platform tomorrow and it would, it would fall in place. What made me want to release it as an audio album? Well, it's about trying to make yourself um, much more accessible to people in every sort of medium. Podcasting is massive now, audiobooks are massive now as well. And I just thought, why not give people another avenue in order to enjoy the, the content? If you go back, you see like there's all the greats have comedy albums, so Having a comedy album on on major streaming platforms is 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 sick as well. So provide an alternative voice and the future can only get better. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Curd Your Enthusiasm. My name is Cody Curd. Thank you very much for coming and joining us. See you tonight. Yo, this is Kate Curd, and Curd Your Enthusiasm is available to stream on Apple Music, Spotify, and on all your good digital streaming platforms.